Latinos, when you say that you want to see yourselves on television and film, you are wrong. Five, four, three, ten. Uno. No hype, no fanfare, no links, no nothing. Just listen because this is the Latino rant and my name is Polly. Now, I said that rather bombastic statement to lure you in, to bring you in and to hook you because you got to have a hook when you're telling great stories, right? That's what we talk about. Great hooks. Cobra Kai has got a great hook. Boba Fett, not so much, but that's another discussion. What I want to do right now is I want to burn it on both ends. I'm going to piss some of you guys off, and there's just no way around it. Now, <clears throat> from what I hear, people who have gone on record as to saying that it is great to see themselves on television, to see themselves portrayed in film as having limited vision as having no imagination okay the default standard of hollywood up until very recently has been through the white lens like it or not that's the setup for over a hundred years take it or leave it for better for worse <clears throat> now, up until very recently, the portrayals of Latinos have been this. Criminals, whores, subservient maids, idiotic people. And that is when we can actually play those roles and have a few speaking lines here and there. Those days are over. We don't want to go back to those days. Because... When we didn't say we wanted to see ourselves in a better light on television and film, that's what we got for decades. If we were able to play ourselves, which I've talked about in, in other videos as well. The default standard of Hollywood has been such up until very recently. So for you to say that we lack vision... Au contraire, mon frère. We, six, we, have, we, have, we have doubled in our vision for decades. We have been waiting for this moment for decades. We have been writing, sacrificing, pioneering, taking any of those roles that were poorly written, disgustingly portrayed, in hopes of getting our moment. Much has improved in the writing of Latino characters in recent years. Absolutely. Careers and actors such as Edward James almost aren't an anomaly. And now they're becoming more and more uh, part of our storytelling. Actors who happen to be of Latino background playing on Latino roles, which is wonderful. But, you know, it was a big deal for some people when Diego Luna said on paper, I just decided to play my Andor character, Star Wars, with my accent. I didn't feel I needed to have perfect English. A default standard says our English always had to be perfect. In fact, growing up, going to school... They would smack the crap out of my hand when I spoke any Spanish in class. This was in the 70s. So when you say to me, well, I've seen this movie and I've seen that movie. And, you know, I've never I've never said that I had to. Uh, I've never it never dawned on me that I had to see myself be seen because you already been seen. You have been seen for a hundred years. You have been seen in every light, nook and cranny, here and there and everywhere for decades. 
good for you. Because I love those characters and movies sometimes as well. Probably too well. I don't recall your, you know, you might have to go back several generations as my family has gone back several generations to where your status, uh, your citizenship is, in, is questioned. It still happens to me. I'm like, I'm from Phoenix, man. <laughs> my, my family has been here for four generations. Okay. But in your purview, right? You wouldn't know the difference because that is all you've seen. So if you don't encounter Latinos, then of course you're going to think that. And I, and I get that. That to me is not racism. That's just ignorance. You don't know. That's why it's important when we do get on screen that we are written well. And that's it. It's very simple. So if I've burned you on that end, if you're pissed off, I'm not sorry. Don't take it personal. This is not an opinion. This is the legacy of Hollywood. This is how it's always been until recently. So, lack of vision, lack of imagination, por favor. I got too much vision, too much imagination. I am waiting for these Latino shows to catch up to me. All right. Now, before I burn it on the other end and trust and believe, I will burn it on the other end. I want to give you an example of a film this past year that destroys everything and backs up my argument. It's called The Forever Purge. stars Tenoch Huerta. And then he's a Mexican cowboy who comes to the States uh, for work. And he's always trying to prove himself to his white uh, employer, played by Josh Lucas. Fascinating uh, relationship because Josh Lucas is basically saying, look, I have no desire to learn your culture, to learn your language, to learn anything about you. We are just too different. And the juxtaposes are there. <laughs> Where Josh Lucas' father is like, you know, Tenoch, Tenoch is a man of honor. He might not speak English pretty well. But this is a man of honor that we've employed. Treat him with respect. Very interesting. Set against the Forever Purge background. And that story takes over. At the end of the day, the two families, the Latino family and the white family, bond, bond, uh, have uh, bonded together to make it to the border of Mexico to escape the Forever Purgers. I, I bring this up because... It takes stereotypes we're so used to, right? In this case, an illegal and un undocumented, uh, a, a, a field worker. And listen, in this case, a, a, a cowboy hand, a ranch hand. And it completely, he's written with dignity, with honor. He, he's a man. He kicks ass. He saves his him and his wife. He saves Josh Lucas's family and vice versa. This is not just a, a virtual signal movie where it's like, you know, every, you know, a uh, brown man saves all, but they learn how to get along and 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 work together. And I again, I use this because they used the stereotypes and turn it around. It's, it's just brilliant. But at the same time, you are getting entertained. Their vision is really strong. So that goes to my other argument, where I burn it on the other end. This past year, we have seen. Breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough in film and television for Latinos. It is amazing. I have never seen it before in my lifetime. And as a kid whose first heroes were Rocky, Luke Skywalker, and Superman, I thought I would never see this. And I love those characters. But I would be remiss to say that I wouldn't want to see... Um, a Tenoch Huerta as Namor, and that's going to happen. Now, let me bring up this story real quick. And I, I really don't want to read too much stories because I just want to continue on my argument. But uh, there is there was a lot of grumbling that this television show called Hentify got canceled recently. And there's a Good Morning America article 
that came up. Hentified canceled by Hentified canceled. Why this keeps happening to Latino led shows. And they cite Stars is Vita, Netflix is One Day at a Time, Disney Plus is Diary of a Future President. And they 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 there's a there's a, there's a there's a paragraph here written by the writer. What Hollywood needs to do is continue to invest in quality, diverse storytelling and give these projects the marketing and support to succeed. Some cultural critics say, adding that they think that support is currently lacking. I disagree. I disagree. The investment is already there. The shows are up. No network is not going to support something they've poured millions into. And what we're going to do is we're going to take four shows, Latino-led shows that were canceled, compare and contrast them to four non-Latino shows that maybe were canceled or are still on. And we're going to go by the numbers. We're going to go, we're going to get the ratings. We're going to look at all that. I'm going to get to the, get together with Valiant Renegade and Diego Flores of Midnight Edge in Espanol. And we're going to go by it down the numbers because... I feel that now it's no longer about representation. It's about presentation. Because if every Latino in this country, which is over 60 million, saw those shows every day, binged them like Cobra Kai, that still wouldn't be enough. It still is not enough. And let me tell you something. Every Latino doesn't watch these shows. Every Latino doesn't even like these shows. Whatever the hook is, you haven't hooked them. So don't talk to me about representation now because you are represented. You have all these shows that are Latino-led and some that still exist, a lot that still, still exists. But where's your story, man? Where's your presentation, man? Where, when are you going to catch up with my imagination? With the masses imagination. Now you get to turn it around. Now you get to hook the non-Latinos into really loving your story. On that, on that rocky level, on that um uh Star Wars and Superman level, but you know, even on a level of let's say uh, a Meryl Streep movie. A Sandra Bullock movie, mainstream, high profile, uh, grand stories. Okay, I'm gonna read one more thing from this article and I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna jump to another article. Uh, I found they go through all the numbers, but I found this comment, uh, by uh, Catherine Gonzalez of Latin Excellence. Um, now, here's saying some others uh, say some of the storylines have been portrayed before and audiences may just be looking for something new. It was sort of the same depiction of what we've seen before around the undocumented, around the poverty in terms of Mexican-Americans and other Latinos on screen. Latinx co-host Catherine Gonzalez says, I do feel we need to go look into other avenues and show other places in other stories. Absolutely agree. I absolutely agree, man. Catherine, in, in this case. <sighs> because now, now that we're here and arrived, we could say we won. We won, right? And winning means being represented. It's there. It's there, man. It's there. From Latino-led films, as, as I said, Forever Purge. In the Heights, Encanto, uh, uh, Plan B. All very diverse films, all very incredible. Now the marketing might have been mismanaged and this, this, and that. But those happened. Those are breakthroughs. And making some money and getting uh, the non-Latino to see them because at the end of the day, that's the goal. That's it, man. That's it. And I will say this, that legacy 
of of the white purview in Hollywood, they made films for everybody. And that's where our imagination needs to double. We need to make films for everyone. Luis Valdez says, I write for the universe. That's how it's got to be. Now, I, I got to say with that in mind, and this is where we're going to burn it down a little bit, Hentified, Vida, One Day at a Time, those in particular wrote for a narrow niche. They did not write for everyone. These stories were not for everyone. They even said so. Are you insane? You get a crack at being a, on Netflix or being on this network and you dismiss any part of your potential audience? No, you can't do that, man. This is presentation. You made it to the highest of highs and I salute you. You are so talented, writers and directors and actors. But make it for everyone, man. This is your shine. This is your, your moment in the sun. And those shows are no longer with us. The ones that are are. Selena had a great run. It was number one in several countries. Of course, it had Selena behind it. Maya in the Three, an incredible animated series. Narcos Mexico just wrapped up its last season. A monumental show of storytelling. Besides the, the uh, stereotypical uh, 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 views of drug dealers. I will tell you, because the success of drug dealers, cartel movies and television shows are so huge that there is a pushback from other Latino writers in Hollywood saying, we don't want that anymore. And you should say there's more, there's room for not just those stories, but other stories. But again, they cannot, they cannot be for a small segment of the population. They cannot be for that 3%, that 5%. Shoot, they can't even be for 30% of the Latinos, man. You can get what you want to get across when you write for everyone. Now, let me bring this up. I found this story. Here, let me, let me, yeah. Oh, it's big. It's big. These are, these are stories. These are um, some of the best Latino led stories, television shows uh, that might not be around anymore. Expanded Universe of Ashley Garcia, Diary of a Future President, Mr. Iglesias. We talked about Hentified. Now, let's talk about. Latino led or, or co starring or featuring Latinos in these shows. I have here Euphoria, Cobra Kai, um, Posse, Pose, excuse me, Pose, Grey's Anatomy, Glee, show after show with Latino either leads or co stars, but portrayals of Latinos in a positive light. My people, we're here. We've arrived. There's no, there's no, there's no need to keep wa waving the representation, inclusion, and diversity flags anymore. It's there. It is now your duty to write in the tapestry of American entertainment to put your mark. But you can't just write for yourself. You got to write for everyone. You're represented already. You're kicking ass. You're one in 10. <laughs> and it has been such a struggle. It has been such a fight. There have been so many pioneers. I think of the actors uh, uh, from the 30s all the way up until now that have pioneered and sacrificed and playing such demeaning roles for so long just so we could graduate. The graduation is there. I give my hats off to Lupe Anteveros. Pepe Serna, Richard Iniguez, um, uh, Kiki Castillo, and the ladies and gentlemen before them. But we're here, man. And 
I will get again. I'm going to get those numbers and we're going to go over them. But I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, just from the list of canceled shows. They weren't writing for everyone and that's OK. Right. But this is a business and you do got to perform. And it's cutthroat, man. It's cutthroat. You know, the, you know, these these companies, these networks don't have to, uh, you know, uh, nurture and, you know, and, and grow and hope your show becomes better. They they tried it for two seasons with Hendified. It didn't happen next. And I like some of those episodes and I didn't like some of those episodes, but I'm different because here at the slant, I actually see everything that I talk about. I actually have a full argument and opinion because I've seen everything. I've read everything. I know what I'm talking about when I talk about my opinion. And that's my rant, man. There, there's no links. There's no extras, no doodads, you know, uh, representation, representation. I want presentation over representation. I want to burn it on both ends on my friends to the left, my other friends on the right who just don't see eye to eye. I really don't care. When you say something ludicrous on both ends, I'm going to say I, I, I politely disagree. And we have this video now. Um, I will say also, too, we will put that video together with that panel and we will kick ass with the numbers and we will. Uh, that's how we're going to approach it. I'm going to have two economists with us that, that crunch numbers. And really, how does this machine work? Because we can have all the representation in the world, which I think it's already there. But it doesn't mean squat if, if these shows are not performing. God bless. I'll see you soon. If you are a member of the channel, you're in the closing credits. Solo te penetro por